Hi folks, this is the introductory video for EME 3214. Um, we're going to talk about the syllabus and some administrative stuff and save ourselves some time during class so we can get straight into the material. So this is what most of my slides are going to look like. Uh, I'd like to call your attention to the at the end of this section line. Underneath there you're going to find some items for each section of the notes. These are sort of your self-test as to whether you've gotten out of the notes and, and the presented lecture and, and associated activities, what I think you should get out of it. So for instance, after this video, you should be able to identify your instructor, locate the course syllabus on Blackboard, and calculate your letter grade at any time during the class. So let's start with the first one, the instructor. My name is Dr. James Minders. Uh, you got my email there. My office is at E43, and we'll set up some office hours during the first week of class. If you are in the other section, the evening section, you'll have Professor Ned Troxel. Uh, there's his email as well, and I leave it to him to set up his office hours. So, check mark on the first one. Uh, a little bit about me, and hopefully Professor Troxel will change this up for his video. Uh, I received my degrees from Purdue University. I've got about 13 years of research experience in mechatronics and five years of teaching experience. I taught at Purdue before I came to Lawrence. I'm currently the program director for the Mechatronic Systems Engineering program. So when we talk about mechatronics in the undergraduate curriculum, bear in mind that I'm also thinking about what you would do at the graduate level. And so I want to try to show you some of those connections uh, between the undergraduate and the graduate program. Certainly not all of you are interested in grad school, and I understand that, but uh, I want, to, I want to try to show you how this relates to the real world, how this relates to advanced studies, and, and kind of give you a flavor of mechatronics in this course. My research interests are in piezoelectric actuation, um, both PZT, which is a ceramic material, and PBDF, which is a polymer. Uh, so we can, we can melt cast it and then pull it, which is to say uh, give it the piezo effect. And piezoelectrics, I suppose, uh, if you're not familiar with it, we're going to talk about it in class. Also, hysteresis compensation, which comes out of piezoelectric actuation. Hysteresis is a nonlinearity that you'll see in class. All of that is bundled up in control theory, uh, which is going to be one of the major focuses in class. And so by the end of the class, you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say control theory. Also, I've got a puppy named Rolo, and I'll show you some pictures of her later. The textbook for this class is called Modern Control Engineering by Ogata. We're going to use the fifth edition. That's the most recent one. Uh, I've got some optional textbooks listed there as well. They might be of interest to you. For instance, Mechatronics, a Foundation Course is the previous course textbook. I find it to be a nice reference book, but not necessarily a great textbook um, just for assigning problems and whatnot. Hands-on Electronics is an online reference, or well, there's a print copy as well, but you, you can find it online. The Art of Electronics is a essentially the Bible of electronics, which is useful. Um, we're not going to get too much into electronics, but certainly you should have had a course already on circuits and electronics, and you will need some of those concepts in terms of interfacing. Also, the Mechatronics Handbook from CRC Press is another great reference. Uh, if you Google for it, you can find all sorts of copies that people have posted. Uh, I'm not going to link to them. They're, it's, a, it's a copyrighted material. I'm not going to link to them, but certainly you can find them. So what are we going to do in course? Um, we've got lectures, like always. Your lecture notes will be posted on the course website. Hopefully, yeah, I'm rewriting them as we go. So hopefully at least 15, 20 minutes before class starts, give you plenty of time to go print them off. Or if you prefer to take notes on your tablet, you can load them up directly from Blackboard onto your tablet. Everything's going to be on Blackboard. I encourage you to ask questions during class. Stop me, ask if it's un unclear. Uh, and there may be un unannounced quizzes in the first five minutes of class. Any quizzes that are in the first five minutes of class, there's going to be no makeup. You either were there for class and you did them or not. There's also going to be videos like the one that you're watching right now. So some topics uh, are going to be covered in a video instead. Reason being that if I give you the video and you watch it over the weekend or prior to class, that gives us time in class to work through problems together so that we can work on the hard part. Simply sitting there passively receiving information is the easy part. Um, if I can pre-record that and we can talk about problems, we can talk about uh, how to work the, the, the concepts into actual math, that, that's the more interesting part that I think you'd rather have me there for. Um, 
same thing as, as with the uh, lecture material. There may be quizzes just to verify that you're actually viewing the videos. Also, we're going to be doing some PBL exercises. I'm sure you've heard of these. Um, it's part of our, our current innovative teaching grant uh, that we're required to try out some of these new teaching pedagogies. And generally, I think folks like them. We tried them two semesters ago. I learned a lot about running them. And you can be guaranteed that you're going to get a better, better experience than the students did two semesters ago. Um, we'll get uh, more details on that uh, further down the line. Homework is an important part of the class. Homework is your chance to practice the concepts that we talk about, and you're going to want to practice these concepts. These are going to be new. Uh, it's very different stuff than what you've seen in your other classes. And so I recommend that you spend time on the homework. I recommend that you work with your friends, too. If you're going to work with your friends, though, do me a favor. Identify your collaborators on your homework. Just write down, I worked with so-and-so. That way I know when I'm looking at two assignments and they look very similar, I understand why they look similar, because you work together. And that's great. Do it. Also, the two sections, the daytime section and the evening section, are going to have the same homework assignments. So if you want to work with a friend of yours that's in the other section, feel free. They're going to be the same homework assignments. They will be graded by the different instructors. Uh, but there's no reason not to cross-pollinate. All of your homework is due via Blackboard at the beginning of class. If it's not uploaded prior to class, I start taking penalties at 5% per day. Um, I'm not going to deal with late homework. I want to be able to post the solutions so that you can review them. Uh, and, and that all gets delayed if I wait for late homework. So when you're submitting to Blackboard, what I want you to do is convert all of your solutions, including any figures you may have generated, into a single PDF and upload it. If you've got any MATLAB code, upload those separately. Um, when you're when you're uploading Blackboard, you can do multiple files. That's not a big deal. And I've got a guide that I'll post to Blackboard for using OneNote. I really like OneNote. If you don't like OneNote, you don't have to use it. Uh, if you want to just write out your solutions by hand and then scan your, your solutions, that's fine. I do require it to be legible, though. If it's not legible, I'm not going to try to sit there and decipher it. Make sure it's cleanly written and, and very understandable. Um, OneNote's great. Handwritten is great. Make sure you include your figures, though. We'll also have midterm exams. Those are great because they serve to uh, motivate your, your learning and also to provide some, some uh, feedback as to how you're doing. I'll give you a warning up front that about a quarter of each exam is going to be concept questions. So there's going to be calculation questions. There's going to be concept questions. Uh, I think I went a little overboard with that a couple semesters ago, so we're going to tone it down to about a quarter of each exam. Just like the homework, there's not going to be any sort of makeup uh, unless you have a dire emergency that is well documented. If you are uh, violently ill, please do not come to class for an exam, but make sure that you have a note from your doctor explaining that you were violently ill. Um, if you were simply oversleeping, I don't have a lot of sympathy. Make sure that you come in um, for the exams or have some sort of documented reason why you're not there. The final exam is going to be cumulative. It'll also be about a quarter concept questions. And we're going to hold the final exam jointly between the sections, which means it'll probably be an evening exam. We're going to have to talk about that a little later because we're going to have to come up with a time and date and location that's going to not conflict with your other exams, which means it's probably going to be Thursday or Friday, but we'll deal with that later, later on. Uh, just be aware that it's going to be different than the official university exam schedule. So you've been warned. Um, we will talk about that in great detail at a later date. So that other checkbox about how do you calculate your, uh, your grade, here it is. Your lab performance, because there's a lab component to the class, is going to be 10% of your grade. Your PBL activities, those are going to be your larger problem-based learning activities where you're going to work with your lab group to solve a real problem, are going to be 15% of your grade. Homework is 10%. It's not much, but it's that practice that's really going to help you on the exam, since you would expect the exam problems to be similar to homework problems. So don't don't neglect homework for only being 10%. Uh, exams are all 20%, and there's that leftover 5% for participation and quizzes. Participation is things like, did you come to class? Did you ask questions? Did you answer questions when I asked you? Uh, and did you do the quizzes? When we add that all up, we're going to get uh, both the class average and, and your individual score. The class is not curved. 
However, if the class average is uh, significantly off from where it should be relative to your, your performance, uh, it may be shifted, um, which is kind of a roundabout way of saying I adjust things later, um, but generally it's not a bell curve. One more important thing we need to talk about is the academic honor code. I know you're all familiar with this. That's your uh, academic honor code statement there that you've never, neither given nor received unauthorized aid in completing this work, nor presented someone else's work as your own. Officially, it's required on all work that you submit. Uh, I'm not really going to look for it on your homeworks. I am going to look for it on your exams. I would like it if it's on your homeworks, but I'm not going to hold you to that. Uh, and the exams, it'll definitely be there. So. When you do group work, for instance, lab assignments and homework, it is expected that you work in groups. I expect you to work with your friends on homework. I expect that you're going to work with your lab group to finish the labs. That's authorized. You can work um, with your friends on that. That's fine. Just make sure that you identify them. You are still required to complete the individual assignments, i.e. the homework, by yourself. So. It gets a little complicated, I suppose, but if you are working with someone and you still have written out your own version of the solution based on your collaboration, that's still fine. If you wait until your friend has finished and then directly copy everything that they wrote, that's not fine. Also, plagiarism, this is the one that trips up some people, uh, so I've started putting it in here. If you quote, paraphrase, or summarize written material, even with uh, just a few phrases, you need to acknowledge it. If you don't acknowledge it, it's plagiarism. If you do not acknowledge the source of an idea, uh, that's plagiarism. If you rely on someone else's data without credit or permission, that's plagiarism. If you use unacknowledged resources, uh, sources gathered by someone else, it's plagiarism. If you copy from internet sites without uh, knowledge or acknowledgement of the source, that's plagiarism. So cite everything. It's not a big deal. It's going to come up in your PBLs. It's going to come up in your lab reports, cite your sources. I know you've seen that before. Just cite them and we don't have a problem. If there is an academic honor code violation, uh, as you are well aware, the first uh, violation can be failure of the course, and the second is expulsion. Hey, that's all I've got for our first video. I suppose I forgot to show you where to find the um, syllabus on Blackboard. It's going to be on Blackboard. Go to the left-hand side. There's going to be a syllabus button. It's going to be blue. Click it. That'll take you to the syllabus. It'll also take you to a course schedule. You can kind of see my layout for the topics in the course. Uh, yeah. So with that, I will see you on the first day of class.